it's always interesting when I find a helicopter that's been disassembled for maintenance because there's all kinds of parts around that are often difficult to see when we are normally looking at the helicopter. Like for instance, we'll see here that we have some blade pins. These hold the blades between the blade sleeves. And you'll notice when we pull this, those two little levers come in, lock it in place. This is the hole where the diaper pin goes through. We have a uniball here. You can see inside there. You don't often get to see that. And the rotating and non-rotating swash plates are mounted on this. This goes up and down our stove pipe. You can see here the rotor system and the upper portion of the transmission off the helicopter. And if we look in here, we can see the uniball installed. Uh, it rides on this Teflon tape right here. And this is the rotating swash plate. Uh, underneath here is the non-rotating swash plate that would be connected to our three servos. We have here our dual-bodied servos. Uh, we can tell this is our right roll servo because this is the limit switch. You turn on your limit light when there's excessive pressure here on the top of that servo. That comes down and engages that switch there. If we look down here at the input lever, you can see the amount of movement that it makes. That's the entire amount that it can move. Looks like we have a hydraulic distribution block here. Uh, this has the filter in it. It has a pressure switch to turn on or off the hydraulic light. Uh, the pressure regulating valve is underneath this cover right here. You can see the pop-out indicator to give you an indication if this filter is getting clogged. This is interesting. This is what the half tank for the two different sides it looks like when it's off the helicopter. You can see here this inner wall that's separating the two sides. And you can see the sight glass here and then the filler spout. If we look up here on the droop ring, you notice when the blades are not on the helicopter, there's actually a space here. And this ring actually floats in here. So if you ever bring your cyclic back real far and you hear that dug, 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 this is what's occurring. When you're looking for the separation between the star arm and the end cap here, what you're looking for is any kind of space between the painted material and the metal. And, and when you see it, it's quite obvious. One of the more interesting items to go and find on a disassembled helicopter is one of these suspension bars. There's four of these attached to the transmission and the entire helicopter is lifted by these four bars. Think about it, 6,173 pounds are hanging off these bars. You would think that they would be very heavy, but they are surprisingly light. Uh, no damage is allowed to these bars because they are not a solid piece of metal, but rather a hollow tube. One of my favorites, the dog bone. Uh, you'll notice that these laminated pads are attached to the bone itself. They're not secured to this dog bone by that bolt you'll see right here when it's installed on the helicopter. It's actually tightened down by this right here. And you can see through here, there is actually a hole where the bolt goes through. And on pre-flight, we want to look at these laminated pads and make sure that there's no bulging on the pads. We have a new spider assembly here. We have our rotating spider that spans inside of our non-rotating. You can see that's straight through there. On this side, we have a safety wire and then one of the tangs bent down here uh, on that locking nut. And we have our tail rotor pitch change links here. Uh, this is obviously off a B3E. You notice that there is elastomeric material there instead of the bearing like on the older helicopters. Here's our oil cooler fan. 
and you'll notice we have our plastic blades in here and it doesn't spin freely but what we want to check on pre-flight is to make sure there's no ratcheting as it turns so it should spin without any kind of grinding noise and you want to make sure that all these blades are intact and none are damaged we have here our air intake uh, as it states in the limitation section they want you to check for any kind of ice buildup here in cold weather conditions between flights We have our crash resistant fuel cell that is located inside the rigid box structure. This has a rubber bladder inside that has been drop tested from 50 feet. You notice we have these nylon straps that hold it in place. We have our spring extensions. These are surprisingly heavy. This has a little bit of wear on it. Obviously, we've been doing some autos on these in the past and these are attached to the back of the skid tubes. Fun stuff.